Welcome back to the first tutorial of GeoPackage in the GIS World Academy. In this short video, I'm going to tell you what is GeoPackage, why we should use it, how to create tables inside GeoPackage, how to transfer the existing geometry from a shapefile to a geofile. If you are excited, let's get started. In this tutorial, first of all, we will have uh, some data from our previous tutorial. So for example, like a building and land parcel that we have already downloaded from the OSM OpenStreetMap. Then we will create a building and land parcel inside the geo package file. Okay, maybe we can first, maybe we can take a, maybe we can take a look at our folders, what we have already done during the previous tutorials okay you can see that uh, always when i have any project as we have already talked in our previous qgis tutorials so i have the geodata folder and beside the geodata folder definitely we have our qgis file and also this is the shape files you see that the organization files are not really well structured but geo package is a file exactly same as the PostGIS, exactly same as PostgreSQL. So you, it is, it is a local. I can I can name it local database, something like this. So you can manipulate everything there, all the tables there, just without going just just we can we should do it. Okay, I will. Maybe I can just. Yes, maybe I can just drag and drop. Shape file and the land parcel is too it is not a good way but <laughs> but we should do it a little bit fast okay perfect so these are the data that we have already worked a lot during our previous tutorials so we have our buildings and land parcels the first thing it is for creating a geo package we have a lot of options but the most easiest way just open the browser so if you couldn't find the browser just click somewhere else here then you should see where is my browser and uh, that that yes here the browser panel you can just activate it and you will see the browser just it's really easy you can, if you have existing geo package, just you can connect it a new connection. But if you don't have it, just create a new database. Okay. So the database name. Always I'm naming database based on your project. So now maybe we can name it JS Word. What's how can I name it? For example, uh, sample C something like this. Okay, or city name so anything else according to the uh, the company that you are working and according to the city name or the project name whatever you want after that oh sorry i should give the address to that <laughs> and here maybe i can say that maybe gis world here also i will name city name whatever you want you can add it there Okay, now this is my geo package, the address to the geo package file, and after that, I should give the name to the table. So it, it, it is my way, so you can do it what in any way that you want. So I download data from the OSM, so always I will start with the OSM. So it is a very good grouping in our data structure. OSM build building. Perfect. So the geometry type definitely I will go to the polygon in the production mode or when I'm connecting, for example, I want to connect my geo package to the Postgres or anything else. I'll always prefer the polygon when I want to work with the 2D data. So okay, just accept it right now. We will explain it in detail further. So and I have another request. If you couldn't understand anything just search on the internet for example okay what is the z dimension m dimension for example just the z dimension if you have the third value don't just check it okay if you i i have already seen a lot of the developers here saying okay we can check it maybe we can use it in the future but no it should be defined exactly according to your project 
z value it's about the altitude if you have the z dimension and m value if you have the other type of the measurements like a distance or anything else but you don't need it right now okay for the coordinate system i mean the germany you should guard so i will use 25 8 which one yeah exactly this one 25 8 30 to the UTM system. After that, I need a table. Maybe now, I, uh, sorry, I should define the fields of my table. Okay. So the first things that I will go is a GML ID. So geographic markup language ID. So it is a unique identifier if you are working in the uh, organizational data or official data which are based on OGC so definitely you can find something which is called GML ID so we don't have it but we will create it or for example we can name it here as an OSM ID okay but you will keep it as a GML ID and definitely the the type of a te the type the format <laughs> it will be the text so the maximum length i will go to 256 try, try always to have it like 2 to the power of something okay so 2 4 8 16 and 32 64 and so on okay then i will add it as a gml id definitely the one of the easiest one is the area but i will show you how you can do it in the geo package for example, you can create a view and all the, all the areas are calculated by a simple view. So any changes, it will be automatically applied to your visualized data. Uh, then area, so it will be the decimal number, the maximum length, we don't need it definitely. And after that, I will go to address. And according to your naming, again, it is up to you, but what is the standard? The standard is what, what the Postgres and Postgres has already been recommended as the best practices. So always everything should be a lowercase. And because if you add it, for example, I am adding it like this. So if I want to write any query, I should put everything on the double code. So I don't like it so in that case we can keep everything as a lowercase so so it is not case sensitive yeah you, you understand what i mean but if you want to know more about it just search best practices of the postgresql in the coding of plpg sql so you get more information about it okay and so this is the address so i will go to the again i will go to the text 512 maybe yeah Okay, and uh, did the second thing, so I have a land parcel, so I wanna make a connection between my, also the land parcel, but not in this tutorial, in this video. So in the next tutorials, so how we can make a primary key and foreign key based in the, in the QGIS or in the geo package. Okay, so also my land parcel, GML ID, it's done. So, for example, you have a building, you have a land parcel, the after that you can make a one-to-many relationship between the, your building, between your land parcel and the building. One-to-many relationship. Each land parcel can contain one-to-many buildings. Or, the, or zero to many. It is, it is possible that we have a land parcel, so we don't have any building on it. So it is a zero-to-many relationship. And then after that, the next one is maybe state name. So I will go to 256. And then city name. And after that, created time. So you can see that how many options you have here. But in just, just think about in the shape file. You see that geo package is not comparable with that so i'm really really fan of that uh, so i will create a time is a date time and we will talk about more on the boolean it is awesome really really geo package is awesome for the local working and yeah create at the time after that i will go to the modified time in all of your productions don't forget to keep these Two values so in that case you know that when this geometry is created and when someone modified it okay and after that so the geometry column name it is something default 
uh, it is not fixed but you can see it in a lot of uh, uh, how can he explain it um, in, in in a lot of the applications or in a lot of the projects that all of most of the JS developers committed as a geom net geometry so yeah we can keep it as it is yes here here it is our advanced options yeah I think it is done with our OSM building polygon and these are our so perfect so here you can see that in the geo package now i have a JS over city name so here you can you can add any city name or any state name whatever you want according to your project so and also the first part of my geo package file is always is a the company name organization name or, or anything that it is your based uh, on your structure okay so here, create a time, where is why I didn't add the modified time there. So I will go to the layer properties, attributes. Oh, I maybe I, I have already forgot to add, but anyway, it's better. So I can also tell you how we can do it later. Then I want to create another table, this table, which is called land parcel. So where is the source of it? It is the OSM and land bar cell. There you go. And then the first field, which is called again, so it is a geographic ge ge geographic markup languages or geospatial markup languages. So, and then it will be definitely text. And uh, yes, I, I will. I will tell you later about the FID feature ID. I think I have already forgot to talk about it in the previous table. So, GML ID, and then the next one is the uh, land parcel number. So, this one should be yes, integer, yes, no. <laughs> we can name it as a text because maybe we have the forward slash back slash underline. We have a different type of naming. Sometimes it is, for example, it is possible that, for example, we have 100. For example, forward slash one, forward slash two, something like this. So we will keep it as a, a string. Uh, whatever about the length, 256, 256. So when you are defining all these length, so from the outside, when a person come and controlling your work, say that, okay, this person is, think about all the small details. Then I will go to the another part city name and state name and after that created time and also modified time so the created time is date and time here is again date and time where is it uh, here Okay, and yes, text, text. The city name also, it should be, again, text. Also, this one should be text. Then 256. So you see that now we are designing a small database, yeah? In, the, in, in our previous, in the next tutorials, also we will complete it. Uh, yes, here we have the polygon, the column name, it is the geom, and then the coordinate system is... Uh, the EPSG of the coordinate 25 area 32 and also this one also for example if you want also you can change the order with these buttons and also if you don't want something you can remove it with the remove field then okay perfect so I have my OSM building and I have my building just we will add some data very fast and then we will finish this tutorial OSM building And then after that, it is a very easy just here. We should write multi-part to single part. So here it's my buildings and just, I should run it. Perfect. 
So now this is the polygon, but as you see, because everything is a shape file and all the shape files are based on the multi polygon, so just I will convert it. So it's very easy, just I will select it, and from this bottom, just you are select all the features. You see that all these features has already been selected. So why I have more than one OSM building? So here also it is my OSM building. Activate the editing option, go to the edit and then paste the, oh, maybe I, I already forgot to copy it. So copy features, and then after that, activate editing option, edit, and then paste features. Perfect, if you now open it, so you can see that we have the exact the same columns, so with the same geometry, but you don't see the geometry because definitely you don't need to visualize it because you have already see it in our, in the map, in the canvas of the map. So field name, uh, FID, feature ID, it is automatically generated. Please don't change it to the ID or anything else because in that case, QGIS can identify it easier. So also it is de definitely better for the other developers. Then uh, we will go to the, the GML ID, it is very easy. This is this is my way, you can, you can change it any way that you want. So always my local GML ID is started with the GIS world underline the city name and then after that or the better way is using concat function then after that we, sh we can use the row number so it will start it from the one then plus ten thousand because it is the string so we have some ordering in that case. So here you can see everything from one, but if you don't use 10,000, so everything will be sort of one, 11, after that 111, 1,111, something like this. Then it is okay, perfect. You can see it. After that, I will go to the area. I will update the area, shift dollar sign area. Okay, perfect. Address, flush the Gmail ID, it is for our next estate and city name, you can add it whatever you want. So after that, we have the created time. So where is my created time? I will use the now function. So you will take the existing time. So here, maybe I have already forgot one column, but I fully recommend that you don't add modi modified i really recommend you don't do it in the real production uh, projects because it is a little bit dangerous and not safe if you want to always add a lot of columns okay so modified time now you can see that also the same as the shape files you can add a column inside the one table but Please design everything before doing anything else. Okay, perfect. You have already saved it. I will close it. Then I will remove these two parts. So here I have my OSM. Maybe I can also remove this one and then deselect everything. So here they are my buildings. Maybe we can just check one of the attributes also. Yeah, you can see FID. Gmail ID, area, address, land parcel, estate name, this, 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 yeah? Oh, 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 let me check modified time and then we will finish this tutorial. I don't know why the modified time doesn't get the time. Maybe we can do it once more. Save. Perfect. Refresh. Okay, great. So it was the starting of our geo package. In the next tutorials, we will talk about the views. We will talk about exactly whatever we can do for a database. We will do it for one geo package. Thanks a lot for your time and all your attentions. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment in the comment section below. See you all in the next video. Bye.